there has never been a last day scenario quite like the one played out at Edgar Street this weekend. Hereford and Brighton met for a match guaranteed to span sports emotional extremes. At the end of Saturday, one of them would be dropping out of the nationwide league. Well, at times in the build-up, it felt like a cup final as two sets of genuine die-hard supporters turned up the volume. But always lurking just below the surface was the awful truth that time was nearly up for Hereford or Brighton. For once, the importance of getting the right result could not be overhyped. I've been involved in championship sides and playoffs and promotion sides. Never experienced anything like this. This is, this is a massive big winner-takes-all occasion, and it couldn't be uh, a bigger occasion for the players. It's, in, it's an incredible day. There's an awful lot at stake. Um, really, it's not worth contemplating relegation, really, because it, it will mean so much to, to everyone connected with the club to stay in the league. Brighton's vain attempt to stay at the Goldstone ground has won them nationwide sympathy and overshadowed other issues like Hereford's plummet to the bottom of the league. They reached the third division playoffs last season and only six weeks ago, demotion was unthinkable. I think that a football club, uh, football league club, is vital to, to a city. It's a focal point for, for the city. It brings tremendous publicity, especially to a tourist area like this. Um, when we played Tottenham last year in the FA Cup, the publicity was absolutely priceless for the city itself, and I think people have just come to terms with that now, what they, what they stand to lose if results go wrong today. I'm sure Graham feels exactly as I do, that, that we can't believe we're in this scenario now with 46 points. You know, normally you, you see teams that are perhaps stranded in the mid-30s or 38, 39 points, and here we are, both on 46, really start fighting to stay in the league, and it's just been one of those incredible seasons, really, as far as this league's concerned. With a sadistic twist of computerised fate to finish it off. As boisterous as the fans were at both ends of the ground, you could see the players trying to shut away the fear, to focus on the greatest challenge of their professional lives. I think it's the biggest game of the weekend in English football, without a shadow of a doubt, and I think it's the players that can handle that situation that will come out on top. It's a pressure that's certainly not new to us because we've, we've had it week in, week out through the season, certainly since I've been here. It may be new to them, so it might be a lot harder for them to cope with. So in 90 minutes we'll know whether it's Hereford or Brighton who drop out of the Football League. Tremendous tension all around the ground. 3,000 travelling Brighton fans, 5,500 Hereford fans. And a change in the Hereford goal with Andy Dubon coming in for Trevor Wood. Wood who actually started out his career at Brighton. I wonder how significant that is for that selection. Kick. A little bit nervous, doesn't get too much distance. It's just flicked on by Williams. And down for by Johnson, one of the best players for Brighton this season. Important challenge coming in straight away as Tuck gets it downfield, looking for Maskell. Helped forward by Norton. Now Sanderman started his career at Northampton Town, just lays it off. Forward run by Williams, that's cut out by Morris, he's playing with two broken bones in his wrist. Brighton going for long clearance, it's just headed on by Baird, Maskell coming in, Baird again, it's fearless at the tap. Actually got sent off last week against Doncaster. Helped forward by Norton. Minton puts his foot on the ball only briefly. Here's Matthewson. Looking for Agana. He lays off. Foster was nearly in on the ball. And dangerous moments for Brighton. Here now is Williams. Gets the ball across dangerously. Agana can't quite reach there. Still bobbling around and eventually away by John Humphrey. That's given something for the Hereford fans to really cheer.
And of course, Hereford came into the league on a real crest of a wave after their exploits in the FA Cup. Who can, of course, forget the likes of Ronnie Radford and Ricky George? And they're applying pressure to Brighton. And we'll have another opportunity to do so. Here's Hargreaves. Takes it to Magori. Back to Hargreaves again. They're all queuing up, waiting in the box. The flick on, and Foster is going in on goal. Still the possibility exists. And Tony's it's just hoofed away by Brighton. There won't be too much culture in the football today. Tackle the throw, goes short. McDonald gets it forward. Norton back to his keeper. Well, Hereford have changed their formation today. They've got three strikers instead of the normal two. And they're playing four across the midfield instead of five. Sanderman with the throw again. Looks for the return from Williams. Away by Morris. Sanderman with the throw once again then. Taken quickly, here's Agana. He's done well in recent games, hasn't been fully fit. And the corner. So Chris Hargreaves on the ball, certainly one of the best players for Hereford this season. Cultured performer in midfield. And will try to curl the ball in awkwardly with his left foot. Plenty of white shirts to choose from, but unfortunately he could only find a Brighton player. Flicked by Sanderman. Norton gets it forward again. Sanderman taking all these throws down the right side. Garner with the flick back out to Sanderman. It's a low cross, cut out easily, and a chance for Brighton to develop a rare attack in the opening few minutes, which have been dominated by Hereford, who have to win this game. No other result will do for Hereford. Baird came from an offside position. seeing the pattern of the match emerging with Hereford applying all the pressure. Brighton have got a quite dreadful away record, only won once away from home and drawn three others, all the rest have been defeats for them. Can't really rely on defence and here they are now breaking out through Storer. Left by Baird, which didn't quite come off, but it did in fact come off a Hereford player, so it will be a throw to Brighton. Looking for the deep one to bed. Little layoff by Storer. Minton was supporting the attack as he will do from time to time. McDonald prepared to take on the Hereford defence. Hargreaves got it forward. Humphrey's throw just to flicked by Masco, which didn't come off of Brighton. Magana going up, not the tallest of strikers, but he does put himself about. Williams. Out to Hargreaves again. Good ball forward, finds Foster. And they're looking to spread the play again to Sanderman. He needs some help though, and it's provided by Matthewson. Agana will try to get the cross in if he can. He'll have to come back though. Now he's got the opportunity. Just tugged back at the last second. Hargreaves. Williams is waiting for the cross in the centre. Might come in now. It's a low one, which is fairly comfortably away by Johnson. Now Mayo forward. The bed can't get there.
Hereford have already stated that they will stay in business next season as a professional club, no matter what happens. If they drop into the conference, they'll give it one go. Garner looking for the layoff to Williams. Goes for a rather speculative shot, which had very little chance of finding the net. Comfortable header in the end, but couldn't find one of his own players. Played up towards Agana, but now Minton in midfield for Brighton. Being challenged all the while, but does lay off to McDonald. He's coming back down the right side, looking for Storer. And that was an important challenge that had to be made by Hargreaves. Plenty of height for McDonald to aim at. Baird, of course, is the best header of a ball in the Brighton team. That's where the ball was aimed. Williams, though, was there first. Mayo cuts it back in again. Anxiety for Hereford. They really can't afford to concede a goal early in the game. McDonald, though, has the chance to set up another attack for Brighton. Going on the outside. Superb challenge came in from Foster, but the, he then gave the ball away, and now once again Hereford in a little bit of trouble. Sanderman's header away, the shot does come in from Morris. And still Brighton's forces gathering. Norton just happy to clear the ball away. on by Hargreaves, Mayo with a firm header for Brighton, free kick awarded for the foul. And they sent defenders forward which shows Brighton's ambition in this game, they know that a victory will put the matter beyond any doubt. on by Williams, Foster does the same, now Agana turning the Brighton defence, no foul says the referee, and the ball just kicked anyway by Ormrod. Sanderman now 27 years of age, Williams back to Sanderman again, being forced to turn away from goal, little flick on which nearly came off there for Magori. And now Sanderman has it, but the ball went out. It will still be Hereford's possession and perhaps the chance for a deeper throw. Here's Rob Warner. Came in today because of an injury to Murray Fishlock, who's been such a consistent performer for Hereford. Here's Warner's throw. It is a good deep one as well. The initial header from Morris, but it's won by Hereford. And they've still got the opportunity here. Warner again, got a slight deflection taking it further towards a Brighton goal, Morris couldn't take any chances. And Hargreaves has the ability to really whip the ball in, a really dangerous 
way for the goalkeeper with his left boot. Here it is now, looking for the little flick on. It actually came off a Brighton player. They're all gathering again. Not a firm header away. The shot does come in. And only just wide from being the goal that Hereford must score. Brian McGorry taking it first time and only inches away. and gets a good dangerous ball in Minton who gets it out for Brighton just help the ball on again Norton doing stunning work in the Hereford defence just the most important game in either club's history sure of each season is that as FA Cup third round day comes along that the goals of Hereford against Newcastle United will be seen on TV but as the fans will tell you this result is far more important Boot raised by Foster with the free kick going deep looking for Baird good straight offside looking for omens Brighton have never won at Hereford in fact they've lost all three games and here once again is Agana breaking through went through three challenges went down on the edge of the box and the referee was not interested in the penalty and in fact Agana receives the yellow card for deliberately diving as Hereford are concerned, McDonald's on the overlap here, Sanderman only just getting enough on the ball, and Morris coming to clear once again for Hereford, sweeping up at the back, Foster just running to Minton, and Matthewson will have plenty of time just to ease the ball back to his keeper, he doesn't in fact make the best use of the ball at all. Touchline. Possess players with really deep throws these days. Williams lays off a good ball to Sanderman. It's the quick release. And Williams again charging. It's two against one. Foster was charging in on the goalkeeper, but Ormrod there first.
Hanneman looking for Foster, but it was easily cut out by Brighton, but I think the ball had gone out. Hereford fans, they know they have to be patient, can't get on their team's back, but they also know they must score or else they're going out of the Football League. Another long one by Warner. Morris away for Brighton. Maskell helps it downfield. Gruff. Norton. Spreads the play. A nice little flick on, but that's too close to the keeper. It will only take one goal. That's all they need. Hargreaves missed it. Matheson did well to retrieve the situation. Look forward by Hargreaves. Agana again going in. Look forward by Humphrey. Found header by Norton. Williams is underneath us, but Morris gets his head to it first. Now Baird lays it off. Couldn't find Maskell. Hereford still doing all the pressing. They've done so for most of the game. Here's McGorry, Shrek spreading the ball towards Sandiman. And Ormrod, quite happy to get the ball clear. Hereford attacking the end, which is housing the 3,000 Brighton supporters who made the trip up from the south coast. Run away by Morris, winning most things in the air, has to be said. Laid back. Here's McGorry again, had the best chance of the game so far. Spreads the play, the header does come in. Ormrond has no option but just, just to nip the ball over the bar and the pressure from the header from Matthewson. What can they conjure up here? All the big men have come forward. Goes to the far side. Williams is there. A brave header out by Tuck. Still in by Warner. Plenty of white shirts still around. Can they get the ball to Agana? Try to get the acrobatic shot in. Still might get it in. And it goes in. And it might well be an own goal. But Agana was the player who was doing all the pressing. I believe it came off Mayo. And that could be the goal that keeps Hereford in the Football League. 20 minutes gone, Hereford won, Brighton nil. picture has changed completely now it's Brighton who have to score this is the way it could go on for the whole afternoon and immediately Brighton showing more ambition here's Stora down the right He's got Maskell waiting for a cross in the center and Stora one of those mazy runs only could find Warner
set up this game perfectly now. It, but unfairly. <laughs> well, another goal now for Hereford. And they could be looking forward to a much brighter future. It's Norton's delivery. the ball in. Well, the goal wasn't as spectacular as Ronnie Radford's, but its impact could be more dramatic and that famous FA Cup goal in terms of Hereford's long-term future. Well, the Hereford fans, you're never going to believe us, but we're staying up, and at the moment, that's exactly the position. But they have to maintain this lead. The best way of doing that is by scoring another goal. And it might come to Agana again. He flashes the ball in and into the side netting. when the ball is in the air. Baird looking for the overlap from Stora, who scored important goals in recent games. Might need to score another one. Humphrey whips it in. It's away by Bruff, and the pressure now this time for Hereford to endure. Now all the protests bore fruit. Referee singing the linesman's flag had been raised for offside. Foster was just looking for any flick on that Agana could give the ball. And now Brighton trying to turn defence into attack. Baird, though, a sole striker at the moment with three defenders. Once again, Johnson will be looking for the long throw, and we know he can get distance. Whether he can find one of his own players, though. Baird goes in, might still come to McDonald. And he did that clearance from Sanderman. And a good header by Agana. And it was Brighton who were looking stretched to the back. Minton just jumped in on the quarry. Swift turn, but and his legs taken from him. Well, 
as things stand now, it's Brighton who first came into the league in 1920, 77 years ago, who are seeing their footballing futures flashing before their eyes, trading by a goal to nil, and they haven't had a worthwhile effort on goal. And surely they must just leave it for Johnson. Baird is signalling. Also thrown up Morris, so plenty of blue shirts. Goes over all of them, though. Minton lays off to Mayo, who played that crucial role in the goal for Hereford. ball downfield towards Baird but he's operating as a solo striker in the main, Maskell playing behind him and I think Brighton now going to have to change their tactics he's got a deep ball it's away by McDonald High breeze Morris to Mayo. Stora was certainly brought down. And learn a yellow card. And the second of the game to a Hereford player. Or is it just going to be the warning? It's just the warning of the boy. Humphrey with a free kick just inside his own half. Morris was once again beaten by Matthewson. Minton turns it in again. And McDonald certainly wasn't the player who was offside. But the linesman's flag still went up anyway. again with another deep one flicked on by Williams only half cleared by Brighton and Hargreaves again comes in Stora wins that ball for Brighton with a determined challenge Minton takes it on and they're lost out now Matthewson forward Foster with a chance to flick on towards Williams the ball eventually does come to him now Sandiman down the right he's going for the deeper cross he's looking for a gun in fact but it's over the top of him, and now John Humphrey comes away with it. over 13 minutes to go before half time once again Humphreys free kick finding Baird but no one else running in on the ball who could really capitalise on it throw, Baird 
takes it quickly. Finds Humphrey. Storer was the option down the right he was looking for. Control from Maskell. That's good play by Hereford. And they're looking for the second goal that would probably kill this game off. Mayo back, Morris forward. Baird. Spread out now to McDonald. Mayo's going on the overlap. McDonald has other ideas, goes for the shot. The idea is right, but no power in the shot at all. And a very comfortable save for Andy DeBont. Lays it back. Here's Sanderman. Nagori now to Sanderman. Up to Agana. Lays it off to Warner. Agana again. Just chipping the ball into the path of Sanderman. This is good approach play by Hereford. The interception was needed for Brighton who faced going two goals down. Well, for a team that spent the season for such a long period on the bottom, you can be sure that Brighton's defence are pretty jittery at the moment, especially having conceded a goal already. Looking again by Baird. Matthewson was there for Hereford. Laid off to Williams. Agan has continued his run. He's got the pace as well. The keeper's come out. Agana now. Can he find the net? Foster's waiting for the cross. It's in now. And still the shot might come in. Beaten away. And Brighton are lucky to survive. Well, the ball was ideal, taking it into the path of Agana. He rounded the keeper. The question was, he was so far wide, he couldn't shoot himself, and he wasn't quite able to find Foster either. Baird is winning the headers, but... No one's feeding off him. And there's plenty of space ahead of Sanderman. Being closed down now by Tuck. That's a ball over the top towards Foster, and it's a good one. Foster has to lay off. Then we Sanderman again. It's another good quality cross. It's gone round Tuck. Delivers the ball to the far post. There were two waiting, and Williams couldn't quite turn it in. Sanderman couldn't get that either. Oh, down is McDonald.
So Brighton will continue with just 10 men with McDonald off the field. And so a really great opportunity here for Hereford. Warner, the long ball exponent, will look for one of his deepest. Flick on. It was by Williams, but there was a Brighton player covering. But another opportunity once again for Warner. Perhaps a flatter throw this time. There's Warner again, once again looking for Williams. It's a good flick. And Ormrond having to die very bravely with Foster coming in quickly. Brings the ball out of his area. Gets extra distance on it. Sanderman's throw. Foster looking to turn. Gets it back to Warner. Held into a really tight position, but it's worked out quite nicely for Hereford. Sanderman, Foster again looking to turn, lost the ball to the far post, now Minton clear for Brighton, but again he couldn't find one of his own players and it's Hereford who dominated this first half, have the ball again through Hargreaves up to Agana, Hargreaves going on the overlap, couldn't quite be found but they still win the throw. The three-man strike force has really worked wonders for Hereford. They've caused Brighton tremendous problems, and they're still doing so here. So they go for another deep cross, Agana's flick. Got a nudge in the back, and that was spotted by the referee. Brough may complain, but this is a good opportunity for Brighton. It's all looking so congested in the penalty area. Now the players beginning to move away. Bed coming in. So far, the Hereford defence has looked absolutely rock solid. Needs to remain that way for the remaining 50 minutes of the game. Ross Johnson, who was born in Brighton with the throw, gets a lot of distance. Does so again, a flick on by a Brighton player, who's Morris, but comfortably into the hands of DuBont again. Sanderman, McGarry, Ford, Foster gets it into the penalty area, Baird to Minton, Storer now looking for the overlap, down the right side, Mathewson will get there first will he, but Storer has done well, comes away with a flick of Hargreaves, in fact Hargreaves did better than that.
Johnson again with a throw. Another deep on Baird goes in, but he was climbing all over Norton. What a contrast to last season when Hereford were in the playoffs and Brighton are a second division club and now one of them about to leave the Football League and it looks like it might be Brighton the way they're playing at the moment. Looking for Stora. Obviously the danger man. They've got two men posted on him most of the time. Minton. Maskell spreads the play to Tuck. Lost control, but still lucky to retain possession. Puts in the diagonal ball looking for Stora. And now McDonald trying to get him before Sanderman, but it's away by Warner. Tuck again for Brighton. Pretty much everything has fallen Hereford's way so far. They've worked much harder than Brighton, created the best chance, and of course scored. Good close control by Baird. Needs support, finds it in Mayo. Now Humphrey goes for the cross. Maskell goes in on the keeper, who is obviously supremely confident. Forward, Baird again. Matthewson and Magori. Now Hargreaves looking for the long ball to Agana. Away by Morris. Flicked on by Minton. Laid off by Maskell, but too much there for Mayo to do. He's got tremendous pace though, and he's still chasing that ball. Not too far away from getting there either. Donald, two men round him. Norton with the important interception just before half time now. Mayo, we know the whistle for the first period will go any second. And Brighton trying to get back into this game. The goal would immediately transform the picture again into a crowded area. And the free kick given away by Morris. Once again, puts Brighton into a few defensive troubles. Matthewson, deep ball again. 
And there's the half-time whistle. Hereford have done half the job. They're leading by a goal to nil after great work by Tony Agana. And if they can keep this scoreline, they will remain in the Football League and Brighton will drop out. At half-time, Hereford won, Brighton nil. Hereford a goal up with 45 minutes to go. So far, they're doing everything right. We had several Hereford fans sort of wondering why it was that Hereford couldn't perform like this week in, week out. Hard to defend at the moment, but once again, Hargreaves, who's certainly shone out as being one of the best players on the field, getting in another important challenge. Tuck gets it forward. Masco was just waiting for any sort of lapse by the Hereford defence. And at the moment, it seems like an own goal from Kerry Mayo will see the end of Brighton's Football League existence. Oh, dangerous ball in, Williams chasing, but too much pace in the ball. game of course still on a knife edge just one Brighton goal changes the whole complexion and we'll once again see Hereford going out of the Football League it's that tense indeed some of the football has reflected that Humphrey was caught in possession by Foster who's going through a lot of work Humphrey again finds Baird who turns sharply Maskell couldn't quite get there and McGorry gets it away Sanderman Long ball forward, nearly fell into the path of Foster, needed that interception from Johnson. Layoff by Williams, Warner lays off to Sanderman again. Little flick on by Williams and away by Johnson for Brighton. And they've just given the ball away again. And Brighton can't afford to do that. Paraded a prime Herefordshire ball before the game, and his Hereford are putting in such a bullish performance, and only just wide from Foster once again. And they've picked up in the second half where they were in the first, with Hereford dominating. Hargreaves, nice flick on again by Williams, but Agana wasn't close enough to the ball to get there. Sanderman again. Norton with the free kick just inside the Brighton half. The Garner on the edge of the box goes down, but no penalty. Ligori finding Norton again. Minton turned into trouble and was brought down. And certainly Brighton will be thinking about bringing on the likes of Robbie Reinelt as a, an additional forward. This is 
the Seagulls who have to score a goal. Morris with a free kick, but charged down by Williams. Minton misjudged the height of the ball, and Baird just goes charging in. Sanderman once again in the walls. Beaten in their last three home games. It's the case that they have to win today, so much they're currently doing. Humphrey spreading the play, finds Storer, has to wait for the ball to come to him, and that gave Hargreaves just the opportunity he needed to get back. Mayo coming into the box, got three Hereford players around him. Now Minton looking for the shot, again, no power in it. Well again for Goodbye, who hasn't really been tested in the entire game. for Hereford. Williams tries to feed it into the path of the Garner. Too much pace in the ball. Goes harmlessly off the field. run down the left side. Dan has really entered a scrappy phase. Very little measured football being played. And turns it back, looks for McDonald. They're waiting in the area for a cross. But Sanderman's got the opportunity of getting it downfield. It's returned with interest. And now it comes to Foster. A measured play again by Hereford, but they've lost out again. Maskell with the flick. Stora was coming in on the far side, and that was dangerous. Mayo to Humphrey, very little option but to get it back to Ormrod, and that is not what Brighton needed, and certainly got a few welcome cheers from Hereford fans. And this is the move that Brighton had to make, they want to bring in their substitute, 
And Donald goes off to be replaced by Robbie Reinelt, who will play either just behind the attack or perhaps joining it as an extra striker, who's suddenly a player who likes to come forward. So a long throw by Matthews. Maskell to Minton. Mayo looking for Reinelt, gets his first touch on the ball. Scored a couple of goals since signing. Giving away in midfield, and now Foster's got behind the defence. He's getting support from Williams. Agan is coming late into the picture as well. Good defending this time by Brighton with Mayo now breaking. Baird turns away. That's a good flick to Reinelt. The ball out onto the wing is on for Mayo. He's got Maskell in the box. Plenty of striped shirts in there, but he couldn't get the cross into the dangerous area. Well, once again, the noise generated is quite amazing. Only 8,000 in the crowd. The pasty crowd here today. And it's broken to Ryan Elf. Can he get the shot in? Had to control the ball first, and that gave Hereford the chance to clear the danger. And now it's a one on one with Humphrey, the favourite, to get there first before Agana. Needs a better clearance from Ormrod. Sanderman's going up. It's two against one, but it's now rough for Hereford. Morris coming out of defence and getting into trouble as Foster takes the ball from him. Great work by Foster, who's got past one. No free kick, says the referee, and the Hereford fans are quite astonished. Still might work out for them. Here's Hargreaves down the left. Three players to aim for. Goes deep. It's a good ball, which Tuck couldn't take any chances with. with that left boot of his all through the afternoon. It's another deep one, which Brough was there first. Wasn't able to direct it towards goal. Williams looking for Foster it's a good overhead kick and Humphrey had to work really hard to get there before Foster better clearance by Ormod found Baird tries to go there at the second attempt now Mayo Tuck getting it forward Porton trying to find Norton caught by Steve Gritt who knows that time is running out for his team and the bulk of Brighton's points have come on their own Golston ground which staged its last game last Saturday have only managed to achieve six points away from home all season. One win and three draws. And it's a draw they need at the very least now. With a free kick just inside the Hereford half. It'll be Tuck with his left foot. They've sent Morris up for that extra weight. Reinhardt's there as well. Morris got a touch. It's way by McGorry. And now Agana. Holding the ball up, Sanderman downfield, but Foster was at least two yards offside. Double, double, 
Brighton who have generated such sympathy for their plight this season with all the problems off the field. Hereford fans have been saying, yes, but hold on, it would be a tragedy if we go out of the league as well. At the moment, they're staying in and Brighton need to score if they're going to stand any chance of staying in the league. It's a good ball across, good punch by Dubont, still not away. And what a great tackle it was by Magori. Just pleased to see the ball going downfield, but that was vital to them. And considering the tension of the occasion, Hereford have been playing measured football. Denies their position at the bottom of the table. Humphrey again, forward. Matthewson again is having a fantastic second half. Humphrey. remaining potentially of Brighton's existence in the Football League Humphrey back to his keeper only just enough on it to take it away from Foster Storer with a header Magori but he loses out well, Trevor Matheson played at one stage for Newport, who of course fell out of the league. There are several players who know what it's like for a club to depart from the league. Bradley Sanderman, another who played for a club that lost its league status in Maidstone United. And his hand to defend now is Reinout. Feeds the ball to Mayo. Tuck drives the ball in. Might not have been the best option, but at least he showed some desire to get a shot in on target. <laughs> That's a very poor clearance, helped on by Norton. Return by Minton. Now, can Baird get there? He seems to be shoved on the edge of the area. The referee says, play on. Maskell shot. That's off the post. Who's it going to fall to? Right out. And Brighton have drawn level. And once again, it's Hereford who face the drop into the Vauxhall Conference. And it all stemmed from a poor clearance from Dubont. The ball returned by Minton. The initial shot which came off the post. And the follow-up could well have condemned Hereford to the drop out of the Football League. for Hereford to once again go into the lead and they need to do so and got the corner Hargreaves again with the corner Desperate times now for Hereford. It's a good ball in, which caused problems. Tuck got it away. McGorry gets it in again. And a header from Williams, which will go nowhere other than the hands and the safe hands of that of the Brighton keeper.
to Hereford players colliding. And they're now having to defend again. Baird, it's Brighton who sense survival. Strange of you're not singing anymore. Well, Hereford, no doubt about it, have been the better team throughout this game. But with the score standing at one all, they will drop out of the Football League unless they can do something about it. It comes to Norton again. Quick ball in, it's what they've got to do. Safe handing again by Ormrod. Didn't start the season as first choice, that was Nicky Rust, who's on the bench today. Deep on in by Ormrod, Maskell couldn't get his head to it, McGorry gets it forward. Foster, back to Warner, now Sanderman, and now Bruff. He's looking for a Garner down the right side. And that'll just be allowed to go off. In fact, Foster was following up very intelligently indeed. Agana inside couldn't find Sanderman. A miss kick by Reinelt, which he has redeemed. And away by Morris, as far as Mayo, who must be feeling so much more relieved. the space on the right side but there wasn't anybody over here in a blue shirt another deep one looking for Foster again Reinhardt picking up the pieces Maskell Norton returns it again over the top for Organa to chase Tuck safely back to his keeper and Brighton are looking far more composed than at any stage during the game and then midway through the second half Hereford won, Brighton won all the tension in the world Matthewson under pressure again Important header by Humphrey. Goes up again with Williams. Foster breaks away with it. It's not the ball that Hereford required. And they're on the back foot again. Mayo surging forward for Brighton. He's got a player over, but he went for the spectacular himself. A long-range shot. Minton will pick up the pieces here for Brighton. Now Maskell. Turning one way, then the next. He's got support from Storer. Baird will be waiting for the cross. Again, back to Maskell. Curls it into the far post. Baird comes in. And that'll be a corner. Goal scorer will take the corner. He'll curl it in with his right foot. It's a good one as well. The keeper came and didn't collect. And he was helped out by the likes of Hargreaves, who now managed to get the ball downfield, but they've given it away again. And there's a player who's still on the floor. It's a Brighton player. And what will Hereford do? And that's good sportsmanship. And that's applauded even by the Brighton fans who recognise it. Dora is down in the box. I think he collected the punch that Dubont misdirected.
Will it be a party or a wake? Certainly looking at the anxiety on the Hereford fans, they're now fearing the worst. The just sense with this game that the drama will be with us until the very last kick of the game. Anything could still happen. Another goal to Hereford, and again it'll be Brighton who drop out of the league. Won by Maskell in midfield for Brighton, but it's given it away again. Swift challenge by Hargreaves. Humphrey gets it forward. first game in the Football League ended in defeat they lost against Colchester and they don't have to lose this game to still be the overall losers in terms of league status Warner will go for the long throw there's plenty of height on it it's away by Morris held forward by Mayo Ligori turns it back in, tuck away, now Minton, trying to spread the play, has it got too much pace on it? Minton and Stora both going in, and it's Brighton who win the decision from the referee, and just at the moment everything is going Brighton's way, it's in stark contrast to the first half, Minton gets it forward, possession gained again by Brighton, Get the return from Stora. Inside to Maskell, who turns quite beautifully and goes on the outside. Looks for the cross, but easy enough for Devon, but he needs to get the ball clear quickly. Being impeded by Baird. Hargreaves forward. Johnson's header, Magori rising. Now a Garner. Forward by Matthewson and is intercepted in midfield by Reinelt. Maskell to Reinelt again. This is the best play that Brighton have put together in the entire game. Baird just crept offside. Twelfth of October, Hereford are in their highest position in the table, and they reached twelfth place. That was on the back of three successive wins, which included a one-nil victory at Brighton. And Adrian Foster, the scorer on that day. And how they need another goal from Foster today. Scored 16 goals this season, a 17th could yet retain their league position. Morris just hoofing the ball away. Again, they'll be looking for distance. Good flick on, and again. Baird getting the ball away for Brighton. Williams is a real handful on that near post. Will it be a variation or well, a tactic that has already worked pretty well so far today? Magori with the corner this time. Driven in again to the near post. Partially away for Brighton. Magori, the ball coming off Minton, and then Magori getting a touch. Couldn't control the ball and relieving all that pressure for Brighton again, who are taking their time. I suppose you can't blame them. Time is now on their side. And on the basis of the first half performance, it really did seem as if Brighton were going out of the league. The words of grit and the reorganisation that's followed 
have seen a real transformation in the game. Minton turning away from one challenge, but merely into another one. Now Norton, again it's the route one approach, up towards Williams, Johnson got there first. Minton, one of the smallest players on the field, if not the smallest, with a touch to Reinelt. And the ball back to Tuck. Baird looking to control it. Did so using his arm. Well, the Hereford fans have gone really quiet. This is a time when they need to really support their team. Sanderman will just allow that ball to go out and an opportunity for a longer throw should he want it. Warner. McGorry to Norton who's got plenty of space. They're all up now waiting for the cross. It's a deep one again looking for Foster. Almost there. Bruff. The shot came off, deflected. Still not away by Brighton. It falls to Williams. Williams again with a flick and just wide of the goal. Well, Williams was doing his best. The ball just wouldn't come down for him and eventually the final effort was wide of the mark. and again they're going in the wrong direction Hereford it's better from Hargreaves and get away by Johnson and now Storer will get there first and he'll use all his pace which is quite considerable ball refuses to go off and eventually the free kick awarded takes it now to Minton looks for Maskell's run and they've drifted offside again Hereford players are taking deep breaths, just preparing themselves for the final onslaught. The tension really now is just so intense. to Sanderman but that means he gets the corner the Brighton were bottom of the table right up until a week ago since the beginning of October and now another goal would just about confirm their status Sanderman gets it away to Minton former Tottenham player Scrapping on the final day of the season at Hereford must seem a world away from White Hart Lane. Baird, who's onside, but the follow-up ball to Maskell was to a player who was offside, and not the most intelligent either. Brighton fans not prepared to give the ball back. given to Norton long ball downfield the Hereford players can see their lead status disappearing but what can Foster do he gets it into a Ghana the ball just wide again more heartbreak for the Hereford fans 
That might have been the goal that once again secured their league status. Uh, Ghana going up so bravely. He's been a really important factor today. Hasn't been totally fit, but so close to scoring that goal. Goal, looking for Ryan L to use his hand. Eight and a half minutes to go. That's all that stands between Hereford going out of the league. Deep again, looking for Williams, it doesn't reach him, but now Sanderman going in and getting the shot in, and a great save by Ormrod, and eventually the ball cleared away. And Sanderman doesn't score many goals, ever. He's never scored, certainly for Hereford, came very close to doing so. The ball whipped in deep again, the keeper's out of position. Once again, Sanderman was flying in, but Reinhardt got the ball away from him. And now it's one against one, Maskell turning, support coming in the form of Magori. Maskell holding the ball up, now goes for the shot, and that's high over the bar. Well, Sanderman realised how desperate the situation was, and although he's not a natural goal scorer, went for the shot, produced a good save by Ormrod. The stage of the game now where a player can achieve hero status. All it requires is a goal. Ball comes to Norton. Might think about the shot himself as he cut inside. Important challenge from Minton. Norton again. And that'll be a free kick to Hereford. Three players lying down, needing attention. One of them, Storer. Norton is also down on the field. And this will mean more stoppage time at the end of the game. Dora has played his last part in this particular episode in Brighton's history. Been replaced by Hobson, who's a defender naturally. And as soon as they can get Hobson on, the first thing you'll have to do is to defend a Hereford free kick. McGorry and Matthewson over the ball. Hobson joins the Brighton defence and it's McGorry who's only ever scored one goal for Hereford 
and Mathewson, who's only ever scored two, who are the players who are lining up for the free kick. What have they got in store? Looks like it will be Magori who goes. No, in fact, it's Mathewson. It gets a deflection. The shot comes in from Sanderman, just over the bar again. Sanderman, who has never scored for Hereford, has flashed in two shots worthy of the name, showing his own particular desire to see Hereford succeed. Well, there's three and a half minutes on the clock, but any number of minutes to be added on because of injuries. And it's Brighton who are going to stay in the league if the score stays the same. a yellow card in the last few minutes Gruff the latest recipient and the Brighton fans have been in dispute with their board of directors for so long but everything seems to be going their way now plans for a new stadium they've got a new chairman despite months where it seemed they were destined to drop out of the league. They're just a few minutes away now from ensuring their league status for another season. And it's Hereford who are having to defend, knowing that they are the ones who have to score to stay in the league. Reinelt gets it across. Still comes in again to the far post. Reinelt will not be allowed to cross it again because he was offside. And Hereford get the ball back. Two minutes on the clock, plus injury time. It's delivered to Sanderman. The referee being pedantic, saying the ball has to be taken again. Well, the introduction of riot police is only the jeers from the crowd. Ball just won't come down in midfield. Minton goes up with Magori. Minton again with a pass. Baird using up time. Tuck getting it forward. Desperate moments now for Hereford. Only a minute and 20 seconds of normal time left. Sanderman takes it. The urgency has got to be there. They've got to take every single chance going. They've got to throw everyone forward. And Warner will just hurl the ball into the box. They'll be praying for just something to break their way. Warner delivers the ball. They're queuing up for it. It does get a flick on. The shot does come in. It was from Bruff and it's still not away. Cut back. Norton was thinking about the shot. Once again to Magori. And Minton gets it away. And Maskell now. Has he got the pace to go for goal himself? It's Maskell. Can he put this beyond doubt? He can't. That was the chance for Brighton to score a goal which would go down in history as ensuring their league position. Maskell wasn't able to take it. But they'll ensure they'll wind down the clock as much as possible. Maskell will take the corner himself last few seconds we're just entering injury time ball comes in now great header just wide by Baird and the Brighton fans will not give the ball back so they've lost their second ball into that section of the crowd we're into injury time Hereford who joined the league in 1972 on the back of heroics in the FA Cup the likes of Ronnie Radford and Ricky George were heroes. But now can they have a new hero? Foster comes in and Ormrod saves. And that was the chance that Hereford needed and they spurned it. And it was Foster who had the opportunity to keep Hereford in the Football League. 
How much time will the referee add on? It's not been a glorious history by any means for Hereford, but they dearly wanted to stay in the Football League. Maskell once again takes the ball into the corner, winding down the clock for Brighton. It seemed impossible that Brighton would survive. It looked like they'd be bankrupt, they'd go out of business, they'd lose their ground. But now Brighton on the brink of survival and Hereford about to drop into the Vauxhall Conference. What will happen after that? Who will know? Free kick has been awarded. Of course, every whistle now. So crucial. We've played two minutes of injury time. Norton takes it quickly as he had to do. Bottles would just be flying in there, but it's broken again kindly for Brighton. Whipped in again by Hereford. And away by Reinelt. Norton again. McGorry. Flicked on by Williams. Can they get there first? The answer is no, and time is just evaporating as indeed Hereford's time as a football league club. Up until last week, they thought they'd have enough to just steer clear of relegation. Last season it was the playoffs, and now total despair and desperation. Still play continues, but for not much longer, and a free kick for Brighton. Brighton trailed for so long in this game. One of their own players, Mayo, having diverted the ball into the net. But the goal from Reinhardt rejuvenated them. And they're on the brink of staying in as it falls to Minton. It's actually Maskell who turns from one way, then the other. He can still finish it here, just wide of the goal. Mayo was coming in but couldn't connect. And the sun, for almost the first time this afternoon, shines brightly on Edgar Street. But in fact, it ought to be dark clouds gathering over this old stadium. Hereford are out of the Football League. Brighton have survived. That goal from Robbie Reinhardt, absolutely crucial. Hereford, for long periods, were the better team. But after 24 years in the Football League, they are now demoted to the Vauxhall Conference. Despair for the home fans. Absolute delight for Brighton, who up until last week, and for much of the season, had faced demotion themselves. The final score, as fans begin to invade the pitch, Hereford won, Brighton won. Hereford fans have come onto the field. There are riot police who are in two lines now, which are keeping the two sets of fans at bay. To be fair, most of the Brighton fans are quite content to stay on the terraces where they are. And for the most part, the Hereford fans are good natured and just want to applaud their own team. For so many Hereford players, utter despair. Hard to console themselves. And there's complete exhilaration at the other end of the field. Steve Grit embracing Jeff Minton and Ian Baird, heroic figures. Britt has done such a marvellous job for Brighton. They were so many points adrift of the next team. 12 points rooted to the bottom of the table. Britt has transformed the team. He's had no resources, bitter disputes and feuds between boardroom members and the fans. 
and yet has somehow managed to perform a rescue mission. Bryson had walked the tightrope and reached the other side. And Steve Griss had earned the right to celebrate. Nobody wanted his job back in December when Brighton were 12 points adrift and heading for oblivion. It's been a very, very long and hard five months. It's not something I'd really want to go through again, but if I had these going into battle for me, I'd be quite happy. What was it like watching? Uh, tense, nail-biting, and that was just the kick-off. <laughs> I've only been there three months and uh, this is probably the best moment of my career. I've been at Gillingham when they nearly went out of business. I was with Aldershot when they went out of business. Colston nearly out of business, so uh, today I'll break my duck. I'm obviously very grateful to Brighton for giving me the chance to come back in. And I'm just pleased that I hope I've proved a few people that might have doubted my ability. I hope I've proved them wrong. I think they're grateful to you, Steve. I think they're great. They're magnificent. I've... I can't, I can't find the words to describe it. Uh, I don't think I can explain what was going through my mind when uh, they scored, but when I scored, the euphoria, I think, is the word when we scored, and then when the final whistle went. It's uh, been a highly emotional season, and uh, this is a great ending. It's just, you know, nail-biting stuff. So uh, I've had two matches in charge. I hope it, they're not all as tense as this, because uh, I think I should lose the rest of my hair, you know. I had a head of hair a week ago. We were nervous, you could tell that, it must have. But second half, we came out and we expressed ourselves a little bit. We, we went at them and they couldn't uh, cope with us, but there was a nervous last 10 minutes. Without a doubt, it was, it was probably the most tense 90 minutes I think I've ever, ever watched. Um, I wouldn't want to go through that again, to be honest. I mean, I, I, I might have to. Um, you never know, you never know in football. But uh, the last five months have, have been incredible, really. It's just the, the way it's all, all panned out. And as I said after the game to somebody, you know, whoever wrote the script, I'm just pleased they, got, they put a happy ending in it.